So team, welcome back to the continuation day two for our Selenium training. So we will start with a quick recap of what we did in day one and then continue with day two. All right. So I'm going to start with going to the core folder, C colon slash Selenium and then our J11 folder, right? So here is the Excel that we created where we very quickly said what is the application, what we're going to do, how we're going to automate it and so on. Right, And we've learned that basic functionality of this application is what is it that we wish to test. First, we tried to do it manually. Then I told you, why is it efficient, reusable, and accurate? Uh, why do you lose that when you continue to do it manually over and over again? And now we are trying to get into how do we do it through automation using a tool called Selenium. How do we achieve efficiency, reusability, and accuracy? Have we seen that output? No, but we are in the path of identifying why and how. Right, team? So, most importantly, what we did is we started with the IDE. Is IDE something that we will always start with even if we work with a live application in your project? No, not necessarily. IDE is something as a starting point for our learning, not necessarily as a starting point when you work with your project. At that time, we would have skipped the IDE portion and started doing everything at a code level itself. We're going to get there eventually. Now, let me launch up the Selenium IDE and show you what we did in that. So primarily, we did a record and while that record was going on, we performed the user activities manually. Selenium learned all the steps that we executed and stored them in this specific UI, the user interface, right? So where is that? If I go to file and say open and select the CS1, CSL1 file that we saved yesterday, we will come up with all the steps we got generated. Some of the steps got generated, some of the steps we wrote them ourselves. Why? When we did a record, we didn't record every step that we wanted. We then identified what are the steps that were missing and we went into the IDE, right click and said, started with insert a new command and we started to write those commands. So what are these commands? There are three things that we have learned. The first thing is what part? What is it that the user is doing? Is he clicking or is she clicking on a button or a link or typing something into an edit field? Are we opening a URL and so on? The target part is something Selenium has automatically learned as a way to recognize that where part as to fair enough, we will type, fair enough, we can click, we can navigate and so on. But where do we do that? So the identification of each of the components that's you in the page called as elements are given in the target column. And the value basically has that additional information that we need to store based on the type of activity. For example, type is the command, the what part, where it says uh, how to identify it. Now the value is basically what else, what do you want to type? We know where, we know that we want to type, but what is it that we want to type? Those things are getting loaded in the value. Have we mastered all the commands? No. Have we gone into element identification extremely well? No, not yet. So today, the main focus theme is going to be around the element identification. That is, how is Selenium identifying elements and putting that specific information in the target? What is it that it is showing out here? Okay, there are different levels to element identification team. Some things which are available, some things which we use more often than not. Okay, the first level is something called as a ID or name. Okay, what do I mean by ID or name? If I go to any of these fields, how do I see the HTML code for that specific field? I right click on the field and I say inspect element. How do you see inspect element? If you install Firebug, like I showed in day one, you will be able to see that, correct? So I'm going to click on inspect element. What do I see out here? What I see is the HTML code corresponding to this specific element or object in the application. This is the HTML code that defines this. Whatever is given here based on this inputs, this field is displayed. Is this field or element same as this element? No. If I right click here and say inspect element, it will highlight a different section. 
So everything that you see in a web-based application has some component in the HTML code on the background that is helping to display that. Why is this text in green color? Is this a text or an image? Where is this background coming from? What are the values being entered here? All of this information. Is this style sheet important to us? No. Right now, we don't even need that. All I need is this. So my object or element of interest is this. Okay, so I'm going to click here and it will highlight that specific element there. Now, the first thing Selenium looks at is, is there an attribute with a name called as ID or name? What do I mean? I mean that Selenium can look at certain information within this highlighted text here to be able to recognize that element. What are they? Type equals text. So if I just say type equals text, then it will try and find an element that is identified by that. That is a identification for it. One of the property size equals 10, value equals so on, name equals tuition. The type equals text may not be just common to this element. It can also be the same thing that you may see in the next element out here. Right? So this can repeat. So can the size, so can the value. So something unique has to be identified. For example, to identify you and me, a phone number, an email address, a social security number, a DNA match, something is unique to you. Just your first name like Jeff? No, there, there are millions of the same names. So we need additional information to identify it. The first thing that Selenium looks at is, is there an ID or name that is unique to that field? Okay, how do I know? So this is team all about trying to identify elements. And very important that you may have to go back and revisit, repeat this video and try and practice at the same time. That's going to help. Because first time when you look at anything, it may look very new lot of things getting introduced but once you repeat it and practice a little you'll master it all right so how do i know that name equals books identifies this to do that all i can do is even here it doesn't matter which one i don't need a new test case altogether i can go here and start to write something out here so if i say name like you see in the format above equals uh, books and say find, will it highlight that element? There you go. Do you see a very quick yellow highlight coming for that and disappearing for that element? Yeah, that is the one. So I know for sure it is highlighting it. But how about I take type equals text? If I say type equals text and say find, it doesn't find that. In fact, it is probably sometimes not even unique, uh, uh, correct syntax to do this. All right. So how we're going to do this team is the first level of identification is if there is a attribute. Each of these things that you see for every element like type or a size or a value or here there's a new thing developed called style and name are all attributes. If there are values for these attributes that are unique, then Selenium can easily identify it. For example, if I talk about calculate, if I right click and say inspect element, do you see anything that can uniquely identify it? Input class equals calc button 1, type equals button, on click something, value equals calculate. Right, So there are different things that are being represented here. Do you see an ID or name? No. If Selenium first step is if it finds unique ID or name attribute for that element, use that. That's the first option. If that is not present, then it will go about creating its own XPath or CSS. Okay? So, is it important for us to master XPaths in totality or CSS, that cascading style sheets that come with HTML? No, not needed for our role. But as you slowly develop in your career in Selenium, you will get a lot of knowledge on it. But to begin with, you've got to identify that XPath is basically an identification to 
relate to what is the path for that element. So what you see here, when we, so if I go here and I right click and I say copy X path, what it does is for this specific calculate button, I have copied the X path into my clipboard. So now if I go ahead and paste it, it will show me this X path. What is this X path? This is the second level of identification. How? It will say that here is the path to that specific element in the HTML code. How can I relate to this? And Tim, I'm basically giving the information as is done by Selenium IDE. But we will use a different way altogether, which I'll come to right after this. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the way it works, Tim, is if you look at the HTML code, the first, these are all called HTML tags. Okay. And Tim, a good website to refer for a overall HTML knowledge is w3schools.com. Okay. They've got simple tutorials, pretty neat and simple to what extent you need. You can go to w3schools.com and learn HTML. HTML is a skill required by anyone in the IT industry. It's a good thing to have. You don't need to be an expert, but you need to know very simply how it works because there's too much web out there. Uh, almost every application has a web uh, components to it. So you got to understand how it is done in the background. These are all different HTML tags. These are basically represent a certain thing in the code. So HTML means that here is the starting of the overall HTML code. Like this beginning tag at the end of the HTML file, you'll also see an ending tag. The ending tag typically starts with a forward slash and that's the slash saying for that HTML that we started here, this is the end. Everything contained between the beginning and ending is the uh, complete information in that tag. All right. Head is similarly something else. But under HTML, there is a head, then there is another body. Do you see this? Only two things. HTML, head and body. If I expand the head, you'll see many more things related with if you expand the body, you'll see other things related with it. This path is telling us the exact path to this. So it's saying start with the HTML, okay? Then go to the body, then go to the form, then go to the first div in it, okay? Then go to the third div element. So this is first, second, third. Then go to another div element, another div element in it, another div element, then the fourth div element, then the table. There is another table body in it. There is a row. Go to the 16th row, go to the second column and the element that has the input as the HTML tag is the one we need. Got it? That is how Selenium automatically can identify based on this X path. Okay? This X path team, if I say find, now it can identify that. But the issue is tomorrow if the application changes, and some code is getting generated here. What happens? Then instead of this being the fourth div, it may be the fifth div or something deleted. Then this will become third div. So this is relative to a lot of other elements that are associated with it. It is the relative path to that element based on where other elements are. Anything changes, then the address changes. So basically I'm saying that, uh, you know, Karen is my neighbor, right? Will Karen always be my neighbor? No, not necessarily. What if I moved? Someone else living with me um, and will that person also be my neighbor? Not necessarily, right? Karen, so that is the issue. However, if we give a social security number or a passport number, whatever, that becomes more unique to identifying. Team, do I make sense of what I've shown so far? Are there any questions in how Selenium does it, which is important to know, but the real thing is going to come now. Any questions, please? I'm going to pause for a few minutes, take a few questions, and then move forward from there. I'm just getting a few questions. I'm going to look at it and uh, address them first, please. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, 
uh, let's see what uh, grieving karte maithili i was getting an error while running the entire test i don't think maithili if we are doing anything on the current uh, i was getting an error while running the entire test case error element id ct100 underscore form content placeholder underscore getting started rb number blah 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 was not set seeing this error when i was clicking on step allow uh, mark button i am confused why i get the error so okay what happens is like i was mentioning that issue okay sometimes things will change so for example when i say find you see the calculate and if i go to the inspect element for this you see this background color is right now this now someone can go in and change something out here then what would happen is the information used to identify it may change so we have to design a way through which we can uniquely identify it and that's what i'm going to show you how we create our own custom xpath for every element okay uh, that's one we're going to Once I show you this, hopefully you can go and try the same thing, Maithili. That should probably take it. Or how the dynamic objects can be identified? Yes, the same thing. Lots of ways of dynamic objects identifying. I am not trying to conduct one session on dynamic objects. However, uh, this is the step one towards element identification. Then element identification using XPath custom uh, XPaths. Then we will talk about dynamic objects. Then we can talk about AJAX based objects and so on. Okay. HTML5, yes, it does. Uh, we use XPath, but we'll always have the issue. Also asked uh, questions earlier. What is this? Uh, we use XPath, but we'll always have this issue. Also, um, yeah. So let's see. Once we go into this analysis of how we do it, then we see. Why do we need XPath? Why do we need XPath if it's not able to identify the element accurately? What where it is? Use that. Yes. Uh, if the calculate button has been changed to radio button, then what to do? Correct. Why do we need XPath if it's not able? okay? Parmila, one question, one time, good enough. I'll go through everything. Okay, all right. So then, what is the point? That is the reason that you don't just depend on what Selenium IDE generates on its own. Okay, how do we show this? We teach Selenium to recognize these elements is going to come. Okay, Firefox. You will see probably the Uh, firebug under tools if you have installed firebug i believe it's under tools for earlier versions i don't remember it but if you refer to any of my earlier videos on selenium uh it should be there if it's not there probably that means that you have not installed it yet peter you should try it again go to getfirebug.com and try and install it all right all right team let me get back to the most important topic of the day element identification on its own have we Uh, is this the beginning and ending of element identification no introduction to get us going forward so what is then the third level the third level is our xpath we will create our own custom xpath based on certain element attributes and their values what do i mean i mean to say that there is a format to write an xpath Have you seen this whole format? How does it start? Two forward slashes, and then the tag of the element related to the other elements. Correct. Now the other way is two forward slash HTML tag open brackets at attribute name equals single quotes. attribute i'll say underscore value this is the simplest formula team how is this the simplest formula oops i'm so sorry one second team can you see my screen now sorry about that okay i think your the screen should be visible now so basically what i was showing is if this is the two forward slashes now xpath custom based on certain element attributes and their values and here is the format in which we will write what do i mean by this html tag let's take a quick example okay the same calculate button the html tag is the first word you see after that less than symbol that is the first word for that what do i see here now in this case i have to say input that is the html tag with this what i'm telling is selenium search for 
all the elements that are found in this application that start with or have a HTML tag input but there might be so many of them then what do we do the next thing is open square brackets use an at symbol write one of the properties that is unique to it so let's say type equals button type equals is the attribute name type is the attribute name what is the name that you see one of the properties like I'm saying the last name is so on or the street address is so on for an individual okay now single quotes I'm gonna say button whatever value I see in here now close the square brackets this is a format out of it however it is how, how do I increase this notepad font okay I can't increase the notepad font but what I can do is I can take a word document and put it in there and do this here is this good I use this notepad because it's much easier that's the only reason okay great so will this work or not no your first and most important thing team of element identification is the syntax for it. Is that correct or not? After that, we have to go on a trial and error uh, method. What do I mean? Take this, put it into the IDE. So this we already did. Let's go to a new step and paste it here in the target field. Get your application so that you can see when it gets highlighted and click on the find button. Does it do it? Great, it works. So my trial and error worked. This is good. Now I can sit with it. If tomorrow someone comes and changes the web page, as long as the type remains to be button for this, very good. But how about start over? Right click, inspect element again. Now what do you see? Input, class, whatever, type equals button. Let's write a X path for this. Okay, how am I going to write the X part? Let's see. So it's very similar. First, what is the HTML tag? Input. Take that. Put it in. At what property should I take? This word. Let's take the same thing. Type equals button. I think it should be okay. And close square brackets. Hey, it's exactly the same thing. So this should work also, correct? If it worked for calculate, should not should it not work for start over? I right click, inspect element, and here is what I found in the property. Attribute and the value. Same thing I took and I put it. So if this worked, this should also work. Right? Are we sure about it? Your syntax is correct. You wrote it in the correct format. But you have to experiment and see if it really works or not. Now let's click on define. What should it do, team? It should show me a highlight on start over. Correct? There's actually a question, so you can put it in the chat. Yes or no? What should it highlight in the application? I've got almost 100% correct answers. Uh, one wrong so I got one at least start over now if this pointed to calculate then this also should point to calculate if it's the same thing why is this not pointing team what is wrong in this when it is saying locator not found whatever then that means that something is wrong with this is it my syntax Syntax is what? Syntax is basically, uh, let's say that if you're learning a new language, a, a speaking, uh, uh, what do you call it? linguistic language, like English or Spanish and so on, okay? If I have to communicate with you in Spanish, I should speak the right language. If I speak something else, if I speak incorrect, you may still try and make it out, but I'm not speaking correct, right? What we wrote is probably not right. Why is it so? I don't know. They look almost the same. I have two forward slashes. Is the name of the HTML tag correct? Do I have open and closed square brackets? Do I have an at symbol before the attribute name? Do I have an equation? Why am I explaining all this to you, Tim? Because this is the process. 
the only reason people do not advance on most of these tools is because they see errors, they cannot fix it, they say this is not for me because you've not approached it in a proper process or a manner. You have to go in a very systematic manner. The only other thing that I can see is this button, button is when I put it into word format and I gave a single quote here, this looked like a different character than what I saw here unlike what we saw in the notepad, right? Probably that is a cause, not sure. So what can I do? Delete this and write it out here. Do they look different? For my naked eyes, no. But if I look closely, go closer to the system, then yes, they in fact look different. Now if I say find, there you go. So this means that my type is not the attribute that can uniquely identify it. It's like last name. You'll have so many last names. In fact, even the participant list today, there'll be so many people with a common last name or even probably a first name. So this syntax correct, but my trial and error has failed me. What does it mean? It means we have to go back and try and do something else. Okay, you didn't find it on one spot. You're basically uncovering different rocks. But as you get through the experience of repeating this, you will master it. Okay, what else can I do? How about class start over button one? Let's try that. If I say here, the HTML tag is the same, but the attribute is class start over button one. And now I say find, hmm, this didn't work. So that means that I have to try one more thing. Correct? My trial and error failed. But what really went wrong in this, even before I should try it, is did I give everything correctly in there or not? Input, good. Two forward slashes, open square brackets, add, class, start over, button one, good. <coughs> but if you go back and look closely, team, I have, in fact, deliberately entered two double Vs out here. Why did I do it? Because it was a manual error. We write, we type, we can go wrong. So you have to observe things very very closely okay now click on find again did we go to calculate or did I go to start over hey looks like class seems to be a better attribute all right now if I want to repeat the same thing for calculate how do I do it two forward slashes input see we're getting faster right now just imagine you repeat this a few times how fast you'll get in element identification in two or three classes right so at what do I take type equals single quotes what is the class for this calc button one now this should work as well right now I'll say find element locator not found it is not only located so it worked here it didn't work here you know something is going on again I have again deliberately doing it the attribute is not type the attribute is class and find there you go. So, looks like class is unique to these objects. Very good. Now, let's go back to the, some of these fields. How about cloth travel? Right click, inspect element. Input. Okay, fair enough. So, as soon as you get the HTML tag, I put input. Now, if I say at and I say, uh, what's this? What do you want to say? Uh, type equals text. What should this point to team? So it should point to uh, type equals text to travel. But let's just see. Clothing, inspect element, type. This is also text. That means type is common between these two and could be the same with others as well. Then what do I do? So if I click on find, what should I get? See, these are the questions. The reason I am asking you is you have to think in your mind. What will I get if I keep this and click on find? Should it give me a message saying that, hey, too many elements found with the attribute name type and HTML tag input with the attribute name type value as text? Ideally, that is what it should do, right? But when you click on find, it will highlight the first element that matches these properties. It is highlighting the first element. How about the second element? We will come to it. Don't worry on that right away. How about the third element with it? So basically same properties but first element with that property or second element. So very similar to this div blank div here team. 
the small one I'll try and do it here so where is that the blank just this div is saying first one this div with square brackets 3 is coming to the thir third one so we will come to duplicate objects similar properties how do we identify it okay so type <coughs> equals text is not good enough that is why I can look for name equals clothing if the name is not there then it's different okay the reason selenium identification uses the ID or name out here directly is because most commonly who is writing this code do you know team who which role in a IT organization is writing this code is it auto get, getting auto generated by its own most times yes but there's something very custom to it who is doing it the type equals text if I say type equals link probably it will show me a link here not sure I don't think it will do but basically say who defines the size who defines the value out here who defines the background color the name all this thing the developers are doing it and they're doing it based on certain documentation where is the documentation coming from requirements document that's where it all starts with basically someone is saying that these students typically who come to browse this need to enter different things they initially when they developed they started with only these fields they never had these fields the version one version two they said hey most students want car payment also there so they added this so the requirements document is getting updated every time the development team is taking that converting it into something called as a technical design document and then going ahead and writing the code requirements to technical to the design or technical documentation then coding we will take the requirement and create test cases and test scenarios out of it and then go and test that is your parallel life cycle of testing okay if what did I want to say yeah so if the users are doing it typically typically most typically in most cases they use a name or a ID field to uniquely identify it. so selenium wanted to make it easy for non-development people to be able to test and create automations for uh, different applications that's why they created this very very simple tool to use anyone can master anyone can learn it but they also added the component of creating the same thing into different formats okay that is where we will get to it's not getting displayed here just because of the latest version uh, I'll, I'll tell you about that there is there's something called as experimental features that power is what makes this tool special that RC remote control power or server power or that web driver power is what it makes it special because you can do so much more okay so they said that instead of all of this let's just say name equals clothing okay and say fine there you go they said if I have a name or a ID with a unique value we can use it directly and that's the first thing I mentioned here okay so basically layman term someone doing record these are the two three ways it will get automatically created you and I will always create this manner why you will control exactly how it's like teaching a dog uh, new skills okay if you ask it to go and pick up a hat and it goes and picks up a gun I mean you're failing at what you're supposed to be doing right and it's good to start with that at least the dog is picking up something but is it even doing close to it that is the difference between ID and your real coding all right so fair enough initial but as we go advanced the way we have started to write our own expats for each element is what is going to help us extremely well Make sense, team? How about at value equals start over? Great. Uh, at value equals start over. Where is value start over? I don't know. Oh, okay. Probably right click, and that's what I want you to experiment. How about this right right click miscellaneous? Right. If I right click and say inspect element, what do I see here? Class equals blue line. If I say class equals blue line will it work where did it go why is it going to the books and supplies is this the only one? Oh, okay, I think it's going above that uh, inspect element class equals I'm gonna click on it find again why is it highlighting blue 
books and supplies. I think it is not highlighting books and supplies. It is highlighting under that. It is basically highlighting the first one I didn't, that is matching a class with a blue line. But it, again, it can be changing. So you have to create your basic formula of saying it starts with where did I, what did I want to do? Uh, let's say clothing, right click inspect element, class TD, class equals. So if I say the HTML tag is TD and the attribute name is class and the value of that attribute is blue line and close the square brackets and now say find, do I find that element? I find not clothing, but the first one that is wherever. Can you see the highlight? The first one that matches that. That is how it is doing it. So you have to find different ways of identifying. If I right click, where is the clothing? And say inspect element, go here and right click here and say copy XPath. Now it may give you something altogether a different one. So if I go here and say this one, now it automatically generates the whole path to it. Only issue is it is limited to how relative it is to the other elements. Okay. Team, any questions before I move forward? You can start to put your questions there and I can come back on that. Okay. Okay, let me see the questions very quickly. How do we uh, start over button? Someone asked me that. Yeah, uh, my silly. So, uh, where is this? Right click on this and say inspect element. Now, inspecting this element, class equals start over button we used, right? What did we want? Value equals start over. See, that seems to be more logical actually. And we're going to come to that. Why? That if, in fact, if you go here and click on the start over. Do you see this getting highlighted separately in a white box? Now, let's say I change this to my test. Do you see that getting generated also on the code here, on the page? So, as you change the HTML code, this is the other advantage of Firebug. Firebug helps me to look at the HTML code for elements and also be able to change certain information to see how it displays. Does it go and change this in the application at that website? No. Because whenever you browse on the internet, you get a version downloaded onto your local machine into some temporary file folder and then it is uh, showing it from there. So this is now just what is downloaded. It is not doing anything on the original. Okay, so you could change this and see what it is representing. See, whatever you saw there was the one that is getting represented. So let me try and do uh, undo this. This uh, don't do. What was it? Start over, right? I think we can write that. Start over, right? This was the one. Now, if you see that, it seems to be more logical to use a calculate or a start over uh, as an input to identify this. Why? Because I don't have to go and say start over button one or is it cal calculate button one or calc button one. Developer created different classes. When they create classes, basically they're saying what should be the style of this, what should be the font of this, what should be the size, all that information they provided in this specific class. Okay, so they may name the classes differently. So the naming convention is not easy. But sometimes very makes very sense. See, calculate is a good word to identify this. So if I go here and say value, no, no, sorry. What should I start with the HTML tag? What is it? Input. Then square brackets at value equals uh, calculate. Okay. And I say find this. Now do I find it? There you go. That's found. So similarly, I can create one more and say value equals start over. Okay, now we're going to say find. Do I find it? There you go. 
So it makes more sense to have something that is you can easily relate it to, relate it to that element even looking at the code level. All right, Tim? making sense. Now, uh, what I wanted to show you next is I wanted to show you something else, Tim. Not remembering suddenly. Uh, tick, 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 tick. So basically, we are getting into this command target value. Now, a good exercise, not the best great exercise, but a good exercise, save test case as, just as CSL2. I haven't emailed anyone the files. I will start to email them after day 2T. Now, a good exercise is, I want to start with a very, very blank new test case. Okay, But before I get into it, I want to create a high level plan. Going back to our drawing board. We want to, all that we want to do, I want to first document it so that it, our approach is very clear. The first step, status is as we go along, we'll start filling this up. Okay. What I want to do is as is. We want to prepare a test plan, a test scenario and get some test data. Did I already do that? One second. Uh, Tim, I haven't probably answered a few more questions. Let me see. Before I go over in the start over button, okay. How do we add more than one attribute in XPath? We'll come to it. So when you can add a lot of them, we will go into it. Okay, I've introduced it. We will get into it slowly. Uh, is the limitation with the attribute method that I will not pick if the position of the element has moved? Uh, as is, yes. The one that automatically gets generated using that old relative path, yes. So for clothing, if I want to custom write the XPath, what do we do? So for clothing, where is clothing? Which one? Oh, this word is it. We will come to it. How do we identify this? There's something that is going to uniquely let us identify it. And we will come to some of these properties as we move forward. Okay. How do we identify text and so on? Let's see. How do we add more than one attribute? How can we use multiple properties to identify the objects? Yeah. We're going to come to it. But very simple. I'll tell you. Let's say that I go to tuition. Let me identify. At least explain that. Okay. I say type equals text. And I want to use one more property. Is only I don't have. Hmm. Okay, let's say job income. Right click and say inspect element. Type equals text. And for this alone, let's change the size to be twelve. Okay, I change the size. Do you see the size of this text? Now I can use type and size, hopefully, to uniquely identify this field through my ID. Is my ID still open? Yes, good. So if I go here, wherever that was, and now how do I identify this? So the first thing is two forward slashes input at what is that first attribute that we want to take? Name of it type equals single quotes text that is done. Okay, and what is next we want to do? Team, one second, please. Sorry about that, team. All right, sorry. So I'm saying the first attribute name is type and the value is text. And now the next attribute name is at the attribute that I want to select is size. And the value itself of this is 12. Okay. Now we close the brackets. And now I've put two different attributes and two different values for it. Now let's say find. What do I see, team? You find that combination of it. The type as text and size is 12. Okay? Those are the two properties that you've used to identify it. 
as we go through the server and as we go through the web driver you will see that element identification will get a little more uh, functional in terms of more into it like we'll have descendants we'll have ajax how do we use dynamic things and all of those things how do we generate a ex uh, sometimes what happens is you'll have text one two three as a property okay the next time when you load the page that will be text two three four the next time you know it will be text four five so what i'm saying is there are some properties which you know start with text or end with number nine or have a pound in between so how do you take that pattern and identify those elements we'll be coming to it but if i have more than one property as a combination that i can use to identify for example i know your first name okay and i will use the last name also because the first name last name is a unique combination at least in the current audience among the current elements the type being text and the size being 12 is unique to this element only and say fine we go to that all right when you give space between value and equals it errors out why is this so i haven't tried but you know you should experiment why is this devaraj for example if i call you uh, you know by a different name or i misspell your name you'll still be able to identify it because you're human enough to understand things you're thinking you you have a thought process but these tools don't have they need it in specific syntax and that is why you need to provide that all right so team 5 minutes what is rgb in the html code okay. again rgb is basically red green blue this is the color background color is decided by a combination of a, i don't know if you know the fact that red green and blue can be mixed in different proportions with each other to come up with any other color okay those are the three universal colors that we have the red has a specific value green and blue if i keep changing this values here the background for that keeps change okay that is just a abbreviation for how we get to it ddf okay we haven't come the ddf where is ddf okay ddf done very good question thank you jeff uh, ddf is a data driven automation test framework okay this is what we will start with in day 3 okay in fact it is a continuation from where we are we're going to take all that learning so far and move forward but how we're going to approach it i'm showing you now we will customize this test plan test scenario test data a little bit more further we have already created significant portion of it okay so i would say about 85% of this activity is done the second task is all the elements that we require we will identify these elements how are we going to identify it we will actually instead of doing this i will say uh ident yeah we'll identify the x paths for all elements needed number 1 okay second in fact i'm going to take this off and write everything fresh now select this delete the steps and create new box uh identify the x paths for all elements needed okay now in the ide okay create or write the commands command target and value for each needed uh step okay that going to be the next one third we will say convert this into a test ng which is basically a java code itself different for a little bit different format into it format that's what we'll do okay take this code as is into eclipse platform okay to uh okay we'll take this code into eclipse platform then customize the code to handle programming in the sense i am talking about how do we all this is fine but i want to capture the results in ide i showed that we will capture the store using store value get this and put it here okay but when i take it into java i will need to use this further 
in terms that I will also add these numbers and compare it with this. Only then I can say the value is correct or not. Okay. So we will have to develop more logic around it. Okay. Handle programming uh, conditions and loops. Okay. Implement Java methods. That's next after this uh, in the project. Then read the test data using a, something called as a at data provider test ng annotation. So a lot of things are new team, but basically I'm writing steps no, I know exactly what I want to do. Okay. Then run the test for various test data and get the results of the test. This is what we're going to do. Actually, a couple of things, important things. Take this code as is into Eclipse platform. One second team. Take this code into Eclipse platform. Okay. Run the test from Eclipse using Selenium server. That's going to be before we go into, okay? And set up a Selenium server. Very simple, few steps on that. There's nothing too complicated about it. Set up Selenium server uh, for running the tests. That's going to be our first data-driven framework project. Okay, we will take about four to five sessions to complete this exercise. Okay, we will try and reuse a lot as is. Next, we will come into and create a similar type of framework, but this time instead of using data provider using TestNG, we will use and we will write and use methods where we can directly go and read from Excel, take inputs from here and get the output from the application and start populating it in the Excel directly. Okay. Project 3 is going to be developing a keyword driven framework using web driver. We are going to do first two projects on data, uh, data uh, using the uh, uh, RC. The second project, third project on keyword driven framework, we will use web driver. Finally, a fourth project on hybrid. Okay. For each of this, we will use different applications. So I just wanted to give you a quick high level of uh, what we're going to do going forward. And team, for all of you who have access to the screencast, please start to use your time in watching some of these videos. I'm going to quickly list them down. I will also have it sent to you over the email. We will not have a session tomorrow. Our day three will be on Monday. Okay. Monday is going to be 16th. Okay, that's when we're going to get. That's as per the go-to training session, uh, the the go-to training schedule. And team, do note that sometimes sessions we will miss on some sessions. We may not have continuous sessions. There are days either I am unavailable due to some reasons, or uh, uh, we have few other limitations, and we may push that date. Okay, but we will cover all the 15, if needed, couple of more sessions to complete the uh, expected topics. So if you go to the Selenium recorded folder, you. It's great to watch this IDE overview. Okay, it's great to watch. So what I'm giving you is already present in different formats. Just each time I deliver different lectures. Sometimes it's changing the applications also. Okay, are all out here. If you have, go in, dig deeper into some of these videos. Take IDE one, uh, four videos, or take this IDE two, four video. Different videos, same output, but gives you a detailed overview about exactly what we have done in these two days. Okay. Uh, Eclipse RC, how do we set up Eclipse, how do we get into RC and so on and some JUnit basics. You'll also find the TestNG basics down below. There you go. TestNG basics. I'll give it to you but I will also want you to watch this video. I want you to definitely watch TestNG basics but after you watch Eclipse RC, <coughs> then you have to go to the TestNG basics. Two videos must Eclipse RC. Actually, I'm going to write this down. Uh, 0201 Eclipse RC and 
eleven zero zero test ng basic. Okay, these two videos please do watch for sure before Monday session. That way we can go at a little more faster pace and cover more topics into it. All right, team. Team, any other questions, please? I'm going to also take that and note it for myself. I will mail it to all the team, all the members. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, can you please answer? I've done that. Uh, are these statements case sensitive? So here is my thing. There are so many programming languages that I typically work with. Not so many. At least three or four. And each programming language sometimes are case sensitive. Some what is case sensitive? Upper or lower case? Does it matter? Some of them matter. Some of them doesn't matter. So it is better to treat everything as case sensitive. That way you will fundamentally not make any mistake. Okay. If I see something is case sensitive, I'll use it that way. Can we use rand function to create random numbers every time I execute my test case? Vaishali, I'm not sure from an IDE perspective if you can do that. Okay, because I'm not an expert on IDE. But when we get to Java, there is a lot you can do. Rand is one of those. Selenium ID, not sure. Probably if you go into command and type rand, I don't see that. Okay, numbers, I don't think. But what you can do is if you can do it in JavaScript. Okay, you should be able to do the same thing out here is what I've learned. But why do you need it? We will anyway move to programming platform. So these are the scripts, steps for data driven framework. Data driven framework project number one. Each data driven framework project is different team. For example, if you go here, there is the DDF1, DDF2 and so on. Uh, 04, see 04 series is first DDF project. One, two, three, four, five videos. The fifth uh, series is second data driven framework project. There are typically some differences in how I've shown. <coughs> Sorry, because there are different flavors to the implementation of these frameworks. All right. Is TestNG the same as JUnit? No, not necessarily. Basically, the JUnit and TestNG are all Java family. Okay, they have derived out of Java. Every coding aspect is Java. They have certain pre built functionalities that can be used effectively for testing but we will go beyond them also because there's a lot you can do directly at the Java level. Once we go advanced you will know that it is more effective to work with Java coding rather than be it independent with TestNG or Java or JUnit. But you have both. You have JUnit at length, you have TestNG at length out here. Uh, same for all the frameworks. Framework steps keep varying. You will see a lot of them uh, in as you keep opening each video. You'll see the framework steps keep varying. So, team, any other final questions, please? How to write test plan, test case? So again, um, uh, Karnika, it varies, different flavors to it. You can put it into the Google group. Someone will probably send you the sample ones. Read and write from Excel, same for test ng and Jane. Yes, it's the same. Because you will you can use the same concepts in everything. Uh, I actually want you to also watch these three videos. How do you read from Excel using Apache POI? Uh, three videos <coughs> on reading and writing with Excel. Very explained in detail uh, so that we can take that into it. But you can watch this next week. You don't have to watch it right now. Uh, how do we access screencast? So every subscriber has access to these videos out here. It is based on your programming skills. Everything is based on our programming skills. We will develop it. Don't worry. Whatever level we need to learn, test ng or JUnit in Java, we will do it as part of this. A, don't see ninety-five percent of my participants team have very very minimal or absolutely no coding experience. That's the audience, and hence my presentations are gonna go keeping that in mind. Mightily steps of frameworks keep varying depending on how we implement it. Okay, there are different flavors. Uh, data driven, there can be a dozen different flavors, but it is a generic, good, correct approach. The same thing when we do it in a project level, we will customize it a little bit more. I'll keep coming to those. All right, team. Thank you so much for now. Uh, thank you for attending day two. Uh, we'll see you back in day three on Monday. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye.